First, we'll look at the price of the actual mill itself. Second, we're going to determine can it produce high quality boards. Third, how long does the entire process take to produce those boards so that finally we can do some math to determine will this thing pay for itself and how long will that take? The mill itself was $3,000. It's from Woodland Mills. It's an HM122, one of their smallest models. And I chose this over the Harbor Freight option. I'm very happy that I did. In addition, I bought 10 blades from another supplier. It was approximately $200. So $3,200 all in for just the mill itself and the blades. On the quality of the lumber, uh, this was a red oak log that was kind of rotten on the edges to start with. But I will say that I am very impressed with what a very cheap mill like this can do as far as turning an old ugly log into something with very nice flat straight edges. What I will say about this is that with a mill of this price and quality, there is adjustment that needs to be done occasionally in order to get it to where you can keep it the same thickness all the way down the edge of the board. Um, but what I'm finding is that getting it within a 16th of an inch is not that difficult. But like I say, it's a little bit of a tedious process. So if you're like me, and you want to just set it up and start milling, I will say that it takes some adjustment to get this thing to where it will cut nice boards. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll time lapse and show you guys the process of cutting up an entire log, and I'll let you know exactly how long that took, and then we'll get into the math. Okay, this log's a poplar. It's really light. It was easy to get on the mill. Something like an oak might have been much harder. Now, what I notice is difficult is to get this thing onto this front bunk and to get it to all line up as it's rolling up through here. Because uh, if it's not on this front one, it's a lot harder to cut. So, especially on a big log, um, there's no way to actually shift the log up to the end of the mill. So that end of the log was just a little bit higher. I needed a way to bring this end up. And with a cheap mill, um, you don't necessarily get that option. So what I will do in the future is put two motorcycle jacks, one on each end, and that way you can crank them and lift up each end of the log. We ended up with eight boards here and that's 48 board feet. It took me an hour and 15 minutes, which I know is a long time, but with a manual mill, it can be slow. A good thing to look at is what is wood going for per board foot in your area. And a great place to do that is on Facebook Marketplace. This type of wood here, if it's kiln dried, they're selling it for $2.25 per board foot. So a little over $100 for the amount of work that I just put into this right here, but it has to be kiln dried and I don't have a kiln, this will just be air dried. So, you know, I would figure, I don't know, uh, by the time it's actually air dried, it's probably worth at least $1.50 per board foot. So do you think that a small and cheap sawmill can pay for itself? It does take a lot of work and I also have to have a source for the logs and a way to dry them. But I figure in a couple hours here, um, I basically created $75 worth of value. Now, will I sell these boards here? Probably not because I think that they're low quality. And another point on that is that if you were trying to sell the wood to pay for the mill, I think that you really have to push for the highest quality possible 
which is attainable on a small mill like this, but you just have to actually watch and make sure that if the track gets out of alignment, you're adjusting it back into alignment, etc. So thank you for stopping by, guys. Catch you on the next one. Have a good one.